Yeah, down in the uh, outside the zip locker room, head football coach Terry Bowden and coach, boy, a great second half, but you fall behind 21 to nothing early. That's tough to come back. Yeah, I mean, really, it, that's exactly right. We couldn't come back enough. We had 28-7 to seven at halftime. Offense matched them point for point, but we couldn't get them off the field. Second half, we needed the defense to come through uh, and get them off the field, and we couldn't get them off the field in the second half, and they matched all of our points uh, with points. But, you know, the kids never fought. It's, maybe it's been a little bit like that this year. When the offense gets going, the defense got it, doesn't quite it, and the defense goes, the offense didn't quite. With Cato out a couple of weeks, that hurt us. But you know what? Uh, these guys fought as they have fought all year round. There was never – any point in that game where you're still the very end where you say, you know what, we just get the next score, we'll onside kick. We'll get the next score, then we're one away. And we kept doing that, kept doing that. And so I was awful proud of the way our players fought, the way they fought back, and uh, uh, they've been through a lot of adversity. But I'm proud of these football players. They, they'll learn a lot for it. And like I told them, they have the luck of having an incredible game coming up where it just, it doesn't heal everything, but it sure gives you a chance to go out there and have something very, very special to end your season with. Coach, you had a really hard time running the football. Did you yeah. come out the second half and just say, hey, we're going to throw it on just about every down because that's our strength right now? Well, I about wanted to come out the first half and do that because I figured they, that was one of the strengths they had. We knew we would probably throwing it two to one in the first half, and that's what we did. The problem is you got to make more yardage than that on that one that you run, and so that's been a problem all year. That's one of those things I'm not sure you can address it and correct it in a week. It might be something we have to really look at in our offseason to correct that, but that's something that we've struggled with uh, for most of the season to be able to run the ball effectively even the very first series or second series we had a third and less than one and did not make it and like last week that kind of set the tempo you know Cato Nelson I'm sure is not 100 percent but boy he gave you everything he had and uh, he had a heck of a game passing the football today well you know he did and if he, if he was only 95 percent that was an awful good 95 percent he, he ran so well effectively uh, to make yards when he had to not only did he do that he found open receivers downfield when he scrambled and not just run uh, for what he could get but making big plays and so it was awful nice to see him healthier, healthier, and, and, and you can see kind of what we can do offensively. Uh, but again, you got to put that together. Again, defensively, we just couldn't hold up against their running game. Our offensive running game wasn't quite enough. Uh, that all said, we got into a pretty good football game in the second half. You know, after the season, we're going to look back, and I think a lot of times uh, we'll say, what if? And my what if will be, what if Cato had stayed healthy? Well, I mean, exactly. You might have, you, you got a, maybe a couple more victories there, and you're not worried about whether you're going to a bowl, just how, how far you're going to go in your other games. But you know what? We can all look back but what we got to do is learn from and say you know what sometimes your quarterback gets hurt and you just got to run the football or you just got to lay out and win a game 13 to 7 with your defense sometimes you just got to do what you got to do and so we'll look and make sure we look at all those areas that we, but the main thing is we got one game left and it's an exciting one game and it's a great opportunity for these guys and I think if you ask them man to man they're glad they get a chance to go down to Columbia, Columbia South Carolina you probably already answered my next question, Coach, but no bowl game this year, but it's almost like that South Carolina trip down to Columbia will be your bowl game. What a challenge that's going to be. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I think you can probably look at it that way. It's a great challenge. I mean, we're underdogs. They didn't pay us to go down there uh, thinking that we had a chance, you know. So we do, though. We've been to Northwestern and Iowa State and some other places, and it's not like that's something new to us. But they are, they, they are already bowl-eligible team. I don't know. They were already 6-4 and four going into, into today. So, again, we, we just, it's, just, it's a great opportunity. Opportunity. I, I, at this point in time, when you're four and, se four and seven, you're glad you have a chance to go in there and play a game like that. You know, uh, the, the defense kind of uh, overwhelmed in that uh, second half. You were playing without Brian Bell and a couple other guys that went down, so that defense was uh, playing with a few guys uh, out. Yeah, Jordan George, Brian Bell didn't play most of the game uh, because they were injured. But, you know, somebody else has to step up. The biggest thing, we gotta we got to force a few field goals. We never yeah. forced any field goals. Right. And then the, for the second game in a row, the other team held the ball for six and a half, eight minutes last week, six and a half minutes this week, and we never saw the ball back to have a chance to score and kick an onside kick. Coach, thanks for joining us. Best of luck down in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, against the Gamecocks. Thank you very much, Joe. All right. For the Zip Digital Network, my name's Joe Dunn. Now right back up to the booth and Steve French.